Okay. Let's see if we can head back up stairs. Examine room. But move. Oh, I still can't go in the freaking room. Damn it. As I enter the hallway, I'm um, nearly run over by a guy as, she, as he rushes out from the corner. Whoa! Sorry, dude. He skids to a halt and jumps a few times, holding his uh, hands out in self-defense. Um, hi? He stops for a moment to look me over. Never seen you around before. You're not one of Liam's friends, are you? Not really. Oh, good. I can't stand Liam's friends. Uh, don't tell him I said that. Your secret's safe with me, I guess. Who are you? Kevin. I'm the IT guy. I run all the security here. Got a blip in my system saying the power went out, so I came here to see what happened. Sophia hasn't been answering my calls. You came here? I thought the house was in lockdown. Kevin taps the temple of his head. Uh, Master code unlocks any door. Right. And who are you again? Con guy. I, um, a special investigator. <laughs> Wicked. So Big Will is finally going to bring down the hammer on Liam in his little nightlife. Big Will? Does he mean William Auden? Um, actually, Mr. Auden just passed away. Kevin stares at me blankly for a moment, but his expression slowly changes as he processes my statement. Passed away? As in... dead? I'm not entirely sure there's another way to interpret that. Whoa. Kevin runs his fingers through his hair and he laughs nervously. Uh, it's, sorry, man. This is just... Wow, I can't believe it. It's kind of unreal, you know? I just saw him yesterday, and he looked fine. Well, as fine as a guy his age can look. Well, as fine as a super paranoid guy his age can look. Well, as fine as a super paranoid guy who drinks a lot at his age. <laughs> yeah, I get it. So, what happened? I'm not sure. Probably a heart attack or something. Well, he may have been murdered. We told him? Hmm. <laughs> I mean... He may have been murdered. Be honest? You wanna be honest? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is Monty still here? I think he might have fell asleep. Oh. Holy cow! Murdered? I didn't see that one coming. Kevin rubs his chin thoughtfully. I guess that's what he meant. What are you talking about? Mr. Otten never liked to talk about his history. Anytime someone asked, he'd always say that he buried his past right. a long time ago. Once, when he'd had a little too much to drink, he told me that he was afraid that one day, his past would come back and return the favor. That sounds pretty ominous. It would fit with the fact that he's built up in his house like a fortress, Man. though. Dead? Really? He shakes his head. Sorry, that's just too weird. I'm still having a hard time believing it. So, are the police gonna question us all and stuff? Um, probably. I grimace as I realize I'm about to be dragged into yet another investigation. Well, I guess I'll hang out here until then. I'll be in the security room if you need me. It's the first door on the left here in this hallway. Um, okay. Wait a minute, hold on. What I click on? It's an old painting on a silk scroll. It appears to be a cave of some sort. An old painting of a forest of some sort. An old painting in a forest, a mountain, and can't do that one. Move left. I try the door, but it doesn't open. I thought Kevin said he'd be in here. I knock on the door and I hear the sound of footsteps. The door slides open. What's up? Um, you said you'd be in here? Yeah, I did. What? I cry my neck to peer over Kevin's shoulder. The room behind him looks mostly empty, but I can see the glow of a television screen across the wall. Can I come in? Kevin frowns, but he steps aside to let me in. Sure, why not? Since Mr. Otten hired you, you'd probably be allowed in here anyway. It doesn't take long to scan the contents of the cold room. There's not much on the tile floor. Save a single chair. A long counter in the stretches across one wall. It bears a lonely keyboard and mouse. 
A mountain lion uh, mounted on the wall are several monitors, all flirting with images of various rooms in the house. At first glance, it appears to be a room meant for a high-security corporate building rather than just a house. Welcome to my Fortress of Solitude. This is the command center for the entire house. So you can see everything from here. Can you think of any reason uh, that someone would want Mr. Otten dead? But why do you uh, work for Mr. Otten? How'd you get this job? That's all for now. How'd you get this job? Mr. Otten offered it to me. Really? Well, yeah. He handpicks everyone who works for him. How'd he find you? I graduated in the top of my class at a university he funds. He offered this job to me straight out of college. That's pretty lucky. Yeah, that's the word for it. Whoa, am I imagining things or are you resentful about something? So you can see everything from here. Can you think of any reason that someone would want Mr. Otten dead? Why do you work for Mr. Otten? Uh, why do you work for Mr. Otten? The money. Duh. <laughs> That's all? Yeah. What else is there? Kevin stares at me if I just asked him if he breathes oxygen. I'm starting to think that I'm not going to like anyone in this house. Is there an, uh, if there are people Mr. Otten surrounds himself with, I can't imagine the sort of people he's uh, trying to hide from. So you can see everything from here. Can you think of any reason that would uh, someone would want him dead? Um. So you can see everything from here? Not everything. Mr. Otten's office is strictly off limits. Very private, you know. No one knows what he does in there. Folds his arm across his chest and scowls. As if it isn't obvious. Obvious? What's obvious? Mr. Otten never likes to be far from his booze. His solution to anything stressful is to drink it away. Of course, he tries to hide it because it's not very professional, but every time he walks out of that room, he reeks of alcohol. Can you think of any reason that someone would want Mr. Otten dead? You're kidding, right? Um, no. You must be new around here. Mr. Otten's infamous around these parts. He's a ruthless sort of dude. Any little guy tries to start something new, he crushes him. Ooh. Poaches employees, spreads rumors, heck, he's even brought in the courts multiple times. Back. Welcome back. I'll say that these other companies are infringing on his trademark or something equally stupid. Of course, that's only the stuff we know about. If you ask me, he's got more than just dirty business practices going on. I mean, seriously, look at this place. No one builds a house like this in the middle of nowhere unless he's got something to hide. If he's not doing something illegal, I'll eat my motherboard. <laughs> That's all for now. Come by if you want to ask me anything else. So, so we entered this room. Where, um, it's the entire like control center of the entire house, except for... Um, Mr. Otten's office. Ah, oh, I see. Um, Mr. Otten is a alcoholic. Uh, he's very, uh, and he's a very ruthless businessman. He crushes any, uh, uh startups. Not uh, startup companies that could threaten his company. He's also a really private person. He's really what? Private. He's a really private. Yeah. Private and we can deduce paranoid. I doubt Kevin would appreciate it. I flicked around all the stuff. I should probably wait for a time when he's not around. Alright, I guess we'll just leave. Uh, well, this one. The atmosphere in this kitchen is tense. The sound of my footsteps sound unusually loud on the tile floor. Uh, hey? Hey. No, he welcomed me with a half hearted smile. Sophia is standing on the other end of the kitchen, sipping slowly on a cup of tea. Her eyes don't waver from the small cup in her hands. I lean in towards Ni ah, Nioki. She okay? She's feeling better. Still a little shaken up, though. She was crying pretty hard when we found Mr. Otten's body. Kangai. Yes? I hope you don't mind if I ask you something. Um, no. Go ahead. How did you know that something bad happened to Mr. Otten? Um, that's... Naoki, please. I was asking Kangai. Sorry. So, how did you know? Just lucky, I guess. Um, I guess you could say I have a sort of sixth sense. I think we should be honest with her. Because mm. she seems actually distraught. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, I guess you could say I have a sort of sixth sense. A sixth sense? As in psychic? I guess you could call it that. Can you give me details on how it works? Whoa, she actually sounds like she might believe me. I can't really say, I just feel things. I get sick sometimes, and then I know something bad has happened. Noki is staring hard at me, as if I should keep quiet. I guess it's just talking about my Kansei is a bad idea. Still, I feel that she deserves at least a partial truth. I see. I suppose it's different, then. Different from what? Many years ago, Mr. Alton experimented with extending the mental capacities of human beings. Oh? It's not like what you described, though. What sort of experiments? I don't really know much about it. It was a long time ago, before I started working for him. He just mentioned it in passing once, so I thought maybe that had something to do with it. He was terribly drunk at the time, though, so I suppose he might not have even been telling the truth. I'm sorry, I'm jumping to the strangest conclusions here. I must not be in a very good frame of mind right now. Sophia sighs and shuts her eyes. She looks like she wants to cry again. I'm sorry, you really didn't care about Mr. Otten, didn't you? For a moment, Sophia doesn't respond. Her shoulders shudder as she takes a deep breath. Finally, she opens her eyes and speaks in a barely more than a whisper. I don't know what I'm going to do now that he's gone. I'm so sorry. Noki places a gentle hand on Sophia's shoulder. For a moment, I feel strange. She definitely sounds sincere, but something about what she just said sounds I'm off. I'm sorry. I just really want to find the person who did this. If there's anything you need to know, just ask, okay? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's talk to Yoki. What do you think about Mr. Otten's death? What do I think? I think it's terrible. No shit, Sherlock. I really don't like having to see dead bodies. Well, I meant who? Oh, who do you think did it? Um, I really can't say. I don't want to make any judgments. He glances to the side and begins to absently mind, uh, absently fiddle with his finger, uh, with his fingers. Can you at least tell me your thoughts on everyone here? Well, Liam is pretty angry with his uncle. His eyebrows went down every time he spoke about him. He covered his face when Aki started asking more questions, so he's got something to hide. That's suspicious. I'm pretty sure Marissa's hiding something too. Every time she smiles, her eyebrows go up, as if she's worried. After she finished her interview with Mr. Otten, she was even more nervous than before. Thinking about it, Marissa had an opportune moment to poison him. Noki glances at Sophia before leaning in with Sophia her. was pretty frustrated when we came, but now she's really anxious. She won't stop pacing back and forth. And what about Kevin? You mean that guy with the red hair? I didn't really get to see his face. Sorry. Don't worry about it. I was just curious. Really, it's good enough that you know this much. I'm kind of impressed. I've been studying body language for a while now. Okay, thanks. Feel free to come talk more if you want. So we getting more anything out. Why do you work for Mr. Otten? Mr. Otten values my services. I am a trained professional and an excellent personal assistant. That wasn't really an answer. What I meant was, why do you choose to work for him? I have personal reasons, but my employment is both legal and morally sound. Well... Of course. That's a weird way to put it. Yeah. It's very um, sus. Nothing. There's hot tea in um, there. Noki probably made it. The door leads back into the hallway. Microwave, it's very clean. Sophia really keeps things tidy around here. Fridge is pretty well stocked, but it's still pre-packaged food. I guess no one cooks around here. <laughs> Dish towel, it's about mm, eh, exciting as a limp towel. <laughs> just normal kettle, nothing suspicious. Copper pots, just as I expect. <laughs> oh wait, you two wouldn't get that joke. Okay, I guess we'll just leave the room. Uh, let's try this door. Ah, Russian. Oh, Russian. Weird. This looks like he built this place with visitors in mind. I wonder what and what changed. Lamp. Ah, the, oh, the body is made of porcelain. Chair is sadly not as comfortable as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> There's a space between the frame and the wall. It's not a two-way mirror. 
I can't believe I'm checking for this. Old habits die hard, I guess. Sink with a porcelain basin. I guess you're supposed to dry your hands on these towels. What exactly am I supposed to put the towel after that? On the floor. Yeah, just oh. throw it. Bathroom stall with his toilet in it. This place looks like a lot like a public restroom. I wonder if Mr. Otten used to accept a lot of guests. What's this? Soap dispenser, according to the label. It's evergreen scented, but it just smells like soap to me. It would. It would. Napa used to uh, use one of those compact fluorescent light bulbs. That looks like everything. And leave the bathroom. Uh, let's try this door. The door ah. slides open to reveal a wide open furnished with some expensive furniture, and this room looks awesome. If I had to name it, I'd call it the living room, but it doesn't feel very lived in at all. Oh, can I? Hello. Uh, hey. She looks happy to see me. Did I do something? Hey, huh? did something <laughs> happen? I saw Sophia rush by with that nice boy, but he didn't tell me what was going on. Oh, yeah, um, I'm not sure there's a tactile way to put this. Mr. Um died. What? Are you kidding? No. Marissa stares into my eyes, searching me with a mixture of fear and panic. I stare back until the truth of the incident sinks in. Her expression changes slowly as she realizes that I'm not lying. Are you sure? What happened? I'm not sure. I think he was murdered. Let's not. Let's not. What? They think pretty. Let's not tell her. Oh, okay. Pretty. We won't tell her. We won't tell you her. You want to tell her? I do want to tell her. But if you don't want to tell her, we won't tell her. No, no, I mean, don't I'm tell like, her. I'm with Brian, you're technically our tied decider. I'm flipping a coin. <laughs> okay, go flip a coin. Go flip a coin. Uh, Tails? Um, I'm okay. not sure. Heads. I think he was murdered. Good idea. Tails. He. Did he die of natural causes? Why would you ask that? William Otten is not a popular man. His business practices are already reprehensible. And there have been rumors of unethical treatment of some of his test subjects. That's why I came. I was hoping I'd be able to uncover something about what he might be doing. So you're really just sneaking around trying to dig up some dirt. It's really not what you think. Okay, then what? <sighs> Nothing. Yeah, bullshit, lady. <laughs> what sort of illegal things was Mr. Otten doing? Earlier, you talked about some rumors about Liam. What was that about? I don't have any other questions. No. Uh, First one. First one. What sort of illegal things was doing? Oh, he doing? it's hard to say. Everything's just rumor, you know? It would be awfully irresponsible of me to spread false information. So I really need some hard evidence before I say anything else. Right, sure. It's obvious that there's uh, something she doesn't want to tell me. I wonder if, uh, if she's a victim of Mr. Otten's actions in the past. Probably. Ooh. Earlier you talked about some rumors. Ah, those. Well, recently, word's been going around that Liam Otten is involved in dogfighting. Okay, Liam needs to die. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get it. Dog fighting. He's in, he's having dogs fight each other. Oh. Yeah, there's two types of dog fighting. There's I, there's actual dog fighting of having dogs uh, fight each other or aerial fighting. But not to mention extremely cruel. Oh fuck yeah! I'm yeah. glad supposed to draw the line somewhere at least. I'm fairly certain he was just getting fed up with Liam's antics. It's one thing to dismiss underage drinking. But the heat from Liam's participation in animal cruelty is bad publicity he didn't need. I heard he was planning on cutting Liam from his will completely. Damn straight. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. That gives him a motive. Yeah. Oh, it does. Planning on so he didn't get around to it yet? As far as I can tell, no. But you'd really have to ask someone more knowledgeable than I. Well, Liam just jumped to the top of my, of my suspect list. On motive alone, but considering that she was the last person to see him alive. I'll talk to you later then. Uh, let's examine the room. A dining room table looks like it could host a lot of people, but judging from the dust in the middle, I doubt it's been used for a while. 2,000 channels and still nothing on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some sort of combo disc player that reads all sorts of formats, it's empty book 
Benefits of organ reproduction. Looks like some sort of corporate presentation or inform, inform informational video. Oh. Yeah. The garden is made up of evergreens. I think those flowers are called... I'm not going to bother. <laughs> They're a uh, fairly low-maintenance plant. Yep. Anything over there? A fan. Nope. We got, yep, same. So, oops, done. Move. I'm actually go back. So, is there any more? Nope. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye. Move. Last room. Whoa, I guess I found uh, where he keeps all the rich person stuff. Ooh, <laughs> rich person stuff. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's a pretty a door. With some animals on them. That's a turtle and some bird. N uh, I'm not sure what the other two are. Is that oh. a phoenix? Maybe. Kind of. Some old armor from like Quinn. Diet. Uh, Quinn? Am I... Uh, yeah. yeah. If the label is to believe, it looks like it's still in decent condition. So I guess it worked pretty well for whoever owned it previously. There's a lot of strange markings on this thing. According to the label, it's an oracle bone. I guess people didn't try to see the future with this? It's a clamshell. Very nice urn. It must have been expensive when it was first made. Probably even more expensive now. Plates, uh, plates have some uh, the same animals as the tapestry. I guess these uh, these creatures are really important. Actually, wait a minute. It's Those were the same ones that we... Uh, when we played ABC. <laughs> hey, I you're right! They are! They are. Yeah, so, so it's a, God damn, a dragon, a turtle, and a dog, or a, I think so. a lion or no, something? No, I think that's a tiger. Okay, a tiger, and yeah. Dragon, a turtle. swan, and a turtle. Yeah, I think so. What's this? I thought it was here? a phoenix after. So, wow. I can't box, believe There's no label on it. I guess it's not that important. I'm sure what this door on uh, leads outside, I guess. Either way, it's locked. Some old, yep, there it Okay. Don't explore. And Lee May gazes blankly in the direction of a collection of old plates. I approach, but she barely seemed to notice my presence. So, uh, hey! Lee blinks uh, slowly and turns to face me. She nods once to acknowledge my presence. She's adorable. <laughs> yeah. I shift my weight from one foot to the next as she stays and uh, stares at me expectantly. What am I even supposed to say? How are you feeling? Stares at me with a mixture of surprise and confusion. I don't know. States it so simply, I almost feel foolish for asking. I guess I was just wondering if you were okay since someone died after all. She tells her head and looks at me curiously. Does it bother you? Does what bother me? Death. Yeah, of course it bothers me. Not really. I guess I'm used to it by now. <laughs> look at her I don't know about you guys, man. but I'm feeling the latter. So Wait, look at her little headband, her little bow. It's like a skull and crossbow. Skull. <laughs> yeah, it's adorable. adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and she had like the pins that look like cat ears, you know? I was thinking like double horns. Not really. too. I still think it's sad, but I'm kind of numb to it all. I stare at my hands and rub my fingers slowly together. My, my palms feel sweaty. What about you? The mayor stares, uh, stares at me curiously as if she doesn't fully understand my question. I mean, are you bothered by death? She visits and examines her in open palms the same way I just did. Slowly, she rubs together her fingertips as if she'd never even seen her hands before. Finally, she speaks. He was very scared. Mr. Yes, Otten? But even though I felt his fear, I knew that I was not scared. I'm not scared, but I still feel scared. Does that mean I'm bothered or not bothered? I sigh and lean against the door frame. You know, I've always wondered what it would feel like to die. I mean, I've experienced deaths, of course, but they're not mine. And somewhere in the back of my mind, every time I do it, I always know it's not mine. I've always wondered, when I die, will I be afraid? Or uh, will I think that's it? Just someone else's death again? Or maybe by the time I die, I'll feel so comfortable with it, I won't care, even though I know it's mine. I turn to face Lee May. She's watching me fight. Um, watching my face carefully. 
I don't know. That wasn't really an answer, huh? I laugh and shrug casually. Honestly, I don't even know why I said any of that. I guess what I'm trying to uh, say is that there really isn't an answer. You and I both have to carry other people's emotions. It's tiring, and sometimes it's confusing. I think if, if we didn't have these abilities, we'd still be sad when other people are sad, and scared when other people are scared. That's just being human. We may smiles and shakes in her hand, uh, shakes, takes my hand in hers. Thank you. Um, sure, you're welcome. Oh boy. Oh, oh wow. What is everybody feeling right now? What did uh, you do before you lived with Aki and uh, Naoki? What does the holography in the front hallway say? Do you know uh, much about the artifacts in this place? You know what? Let's deal with that first. Artifacts. Yeah. Do you know artifacts. much about the artifacts in this place? Leave me nods. Um, could you maybe tell me about them? If you wish. <laughs> yeah, I do. Most are safety charms meant to ward off danger. I turn to the large tapestry on the wall. What about this? Well, oh, why are these animals? They are the four legendary creatures. Tortoise, dragon, and phoenix. And tiger. Yep, thought so. For some reason, this mythology feels familiar, but I'm not sure why. Not, it's not anything I've ever studied. It's not it's like we just played me. ABC Murders. <laughs> really stand for anything in particular. Many things. Directions on the compass. Sometimes schools of thought. Overall, they represent balance. Weird. They feel kind of familiar, especially the tiger. The tiger and the dragon are mortal enemies. <laughs> uh, reaches the tether's turn, but she hesitates and draws her hand back. The dragon represents cunning and intelligence, and the tiger represents raw power and strength. Dragon and tiger, mind and body, they fight each other constantly, but neither can win. Uh. My stomach uh, tightens up as I look at the tapestry hanging on the wall. Then let's fight between, uh, where neither can win. Mimi watches me carefully. She's trying to decipher my emotions, but I don't even fully understand what I'm feeling. What bothers you? I'm not sure. It's probably nothing. See, satisfied my response. Not, not surprised there, since I'm not satisfied either. I don't really have anything else to say, though, so our conversation devolves into an uncomfortable silence. Um. Was mm. the calligraphy Should in the we front? just go from down up? Down. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, uh huh. What does the calligraphy in the front no hallway dust say? settles here. It means that this place is quiet and safe from influence of the outside world. Huh, oh. okay. Well, that was easy. <laughs> what do you do before you live with Aki and Yoki? I'm not allowed to speak about that. Oh, god damn it. Is there anything you are allowed to speak about? She closes her eyes and takes a small breath. Her lips move slowly as she's pouring over the list of things she's allowed to share. Finally, she opens her eyes and smiles with a self-satisfied look on her face. I'm authorized to share anything that might aid your investigation. Whoa, that's with that phrasing. She sounds so formal all of a sudden. What is everybody feeling right now? Hmm? Naoki is scared. No, I mean the others, not our friends. Oh, I apologize. Fine, it wasn't very specific. Takes a deep breath and closes her eyes again. This time, it takes her a little longer to sort her Sophia thoughts. Sophia is sad. She feels as if there is no hope, but there is also relief. Huh. Relief. Again, I feel uneasy about Sophia. Earlier, when I she didn't care about Mr. Otten, she didn't actually answer me. All she said then, uh, she didn't know what to do now that he's gone. I don't know why that bugs me so much, but it seems like she was avoiding the question. Marissa is scared and disappointed. There's so much emotion inside of her. It's all flowing at the same time. She wants to be happy, but she also feels very guilty. Humans are very complicated. Thus. No, it's earnestly if she's going to start a new idea. I'm not Kevin in, uh... is uncertain. He does not know what he should be feeling. He definitely seemed to have trouble believing me when I told him that Mr. Un died. Denial, I guess. And Liam? I can't. What's wrong? He's with Aki right now. She is manipulating his emotions with her Kansei. I cannot tell what is his and what is not. 
That girl seems to enjoy invading everybody's privacy. It's a wonder that Minoki and Lee Maiden put up with her. Hopefully, whatever she's up to will lead to something useful. Talk to you later.